Okay. Hello there. I'm Dennis. Today we're going to install Arch Linux and we're going to use the Arch Linux installation guide. This is their home page, archlinux.org. I suggest that you remember this page or mark it in your bookmarks, your favorites, however, and refer to it probably weekly, at the very least monthly. Uh, there was just a big problem here, and all it took was a trip to the wiki and a paste and copy and paste command into the terminal corrected it. So anyway, we're here at archlinux.org, and if you look up at the upper right, click on download, it'll give you options to choose your download, and it'll also tell you the last release date, which in this case is December the 1st, 2019. So 27 days old, 25, something like that. Or if you don't like those options, you can come down, scroll down, and find your country of origin, and pick mirrors closest to you. I usually do a torrent because if for some reason they download stops when I bring up my my torrent loader again, it will just restart the download. Okay, so once you get your download, you're going to actually put it on either, either a flash drive, thumb drive, or a CD, optical disc, and know how to boot up to that. So about the middle of your screen here on the right hand side it'll say installation guide we're going to left click that and that should open up our installation guide okay so very first thing in the contents is pre-installation and it just basically says the same thing i i did you need to download the iso put it on a disc or cd you need to verify it. If you're running, if you're running Arch and you're doing this in an Arch system, you can just copy and paste that command over into your terminal and it'll verify it for you. Uh, otherwise, here's your line. And it's Arch Linux, that version number that uh, you'll have that link when it's coming in when you're downloading it. So, next thing, boot the live environment. What you see there is a, I've got, I'm using Oracle's virtual box and I've got Arch Linux ISO ready to boot up to. What you'll see will be the same thing you'll see when you're booting up into uh, your actual, either your USB or your CD-ROM drive, or in my case, the ISO file itself. So let me click start so we can boot into the live environment. Okay, you'll be presented with this screen right here. Either boot Arch Linux, boot a existing OS, which we don't have at this point. You can run a couple tests here. You can reboot, and you can power off. So, we're going to boot to our live environment. All right, so we're going to boot to our uh, live environment. And the first thing after we get there is it tells you you need to set your keyboard layout. So instead of using my virtual box, I'm going to copy this and paste it into my terminal. After I make the terminal a little bigger, maybe help to see. We'll paste that and hit enter. And if you'll notice, you get all your keyboard layout. Three in here is US. You got Amiga, Atari, and you got Sun 5. So once you know which one of those it is, the next thing is to type this command in. And this last part of that, that is the one of the choices that you made when we run this command on your key map. Okay, so it says verify your boot mode. Uh, in this case, we're going to be booting using legacy mode in BIOS. To verify that, I'm going to put this in my terminal. And the results will be what you'll see is the same. 
and it says there's no such file or directory. So that means I'm booting legacy BIOS. If you do get some uh, directory, you need to install using an EFI, UEFI method. So, first thing it says to do is connect to the internet. And in order to do that, if you're using a laptop and only have a Wi-Fi, go over to the actual terminal here, you can run this command, Wi-Fi menu. It'll look out search for hardware your wireless card so if it finds it which it will be able to type in your password that should allow you to go online now you'll have to do some steps further on down in order to make that process permanent but for now that will get you online and get this installation started so once you know you're online it says suggest that we ping a website but i say if i'm gonna ping something i might as well do something that's gonna benefit me in the, in the installation here which i ran pacman space dash capital s y y and it's syncing our databases over here the next thing we need to do is update our system clock when this gets finished and we'll run that, do that by running this command. Type, time, date, CTL, all one word, space, set, S-E-T, space, M-T-P, space, true. Check your spelling. And right, the up arrow, we're we'll bringing that back. And we can backspace all of the stuff except the time, date, CTL, and hit enter. And you'll see it's Saturday, 2019, December 28th. And according to their clock, it's 6 and something in the afternoon at this point. But Okay, so let me clear this. We've got our time set. Next thing in the wiki is to partition our disk. So we're going to partition our disk. I use CF disk. Because I like it. <laughs> it reminds me of the old uh, DOS days when you had to format your hard drives with uh, DOS before you could install Windows. So I'm going to select DOS here. I don't have any l large drives to justify me using the other. So I'm going to allocate two gigabytes here. Hit enter for primary. Slide over to type. Hit enter. Select. Linux swap and hit enter. Now we'll use the arrow key down to select what's left up there. Hit new. Since we got a 20 gig hard drive, I'm going to split it right in the middle and say 20 gig and hit enter. Say primary. Most important part of this process is select bootable and hit enter. You'll verify that. See the little asterisk under boot up there. Okay, arrow down to get to the new space and enter going to use all of this so hit enter again primary going to hit it now we're ready to write so we slide over to right hit enter going to make us type in either yes or no i'm going to type in yes and hit enter and then we're going to quit and it's syncing the disk brings us back to our command prompt so control l clears the screen all right so we've made some partitions let's make some file systems on them format them so we're gonna we're gonna make oops we're gonna mk swap on our device sda1 and it's two gig and we're gonna turn that swap on same device sda1 and say boom there that is now we can make a regular file system so we're gonna make a file system period xt t4 ext4 space on device sda2 hit enter okay up arrow key will bring that command back backspace the two off of there replace it with the three hit enter and there we go control l is going to clean the screen next thing we got to do 
according to the wiki, is mount our partition. So we'll mount our first one, which was device SDA2, and that's going to be our root partition, and we're going to mount that on at MNT. In Windows, this would be like a C drive. So now we have a home directory, and we need a directory, so we're going to say make mkdir space slash mnt slash home. Okay, now let's mount our home directory. By mount space slash device sda3 space slash mnt to home. Okay, hit enter, and we're good to go. Now, next thing, selecting our mirror. So we'll do that by running nano slash etsy pacman dot d slash mirror list. Hit enter. And you can see right there at the top it says this list was generated December the 1st of this year, so, or 2019, so it's reasonably old, so we're going to uh, edit here, we're going to take out the anything but where I am, the United States, or in your case, the you know, uh, wherever you're at, since Arch is Canadian-based, anything in Can uh, Canada, I'm going to select that as well. It is adjoining our country. And I'm going to get, I don't know, probably over six, but less than a half a dozen. And they'll all be from the United States or Canada. And hopefully this will give us our fastest mirrors. We're doing our part anyway. Let me get one more just because I can. There it is. Okay. Control O and Nano writes it out. Enter to verify. Control X gets us out. Control L will clear the screen. Okay. So now, edited our mirror list. Next step is to Packstrap Mount Base Linux Linux Firmware. Packstrap says right here is a script to install base package. Linux kernel and firmware for common hardware. You can substitute Linux for a kernel package of your choice. So this is the kernel. And if we click there, uh, actually I'm going to tell it to open up in a new link. It'll list the officially supported kernels, which is the Linux, which is the one I'm typed in at this point, the hardened, which would be Linux dash hardened. The long term LTS would be Linux dash LTS and the Zen kernel, which would be Linux dash Zen. I'm going to try this one. I've been hearing good things about it, so I'm going to try that. Close out of that. Back to our installation. And over here, so I'm going to say pack strap. Packstrap slash MNT. Before I run this command, I'm going to make sure that I got some other things. Linux dash Zen space Linux dash firmware. We know we're going to need, well, let's read what we need. We got the base, and we got the kernel. So we're going to use the Linux Zen, and we got the Linux firmware. Now, what else? It says this doesn't include those things. You may consider installing the, the following in file system. We we've already installed that with the .ext4. If we're using RAID or LVM partitions, we might need some utilities for that, but we're not. 
If you know of anything that's not covered in the Linux firmware, which you can get there by clicking this link, and it'll show you. And so if you've got anything special that's not listed here, you could install it during this time. Then we're going to need software that's necessary for networking. If you click on that, it'll bring you to here. And you can say, in my case, Network Managers, because that's what I'm looking for. This is the one I'm going to use. So going back to the wiki, I'm going to include Network Manager. But he needs uh, the little icon in the systems tray when we're finished. So that's Network Manager Applet. All right, let's see what else we're going to need. We're going to need a text editor, so let's include Nano. And we're going to need uh, the man pages, man DB. Dash DB, man, dash pages. Okay, we're going to need text info. Okay, now if we just hit enter right now at this point right here, when it's installing, it will not install sudo. And we're going to need sudo. So we could do it one of two ways. We could wait until we get completely through down here to the bottom. And we do our reboot. And we go to their post installation. And we could uh, go to those. And it would say add a user at that point. Okay. But until that point, we don't have sudo. So even though we're going to wait and get a uh, create a user, we will not have sudo uh, uh, installed. So we will not have privileges. So, how do you get sudo? Well, you could just simply specify sudo, or we could include the package that includes sudo, which is base dash devel. Okay, so once we get that, then we'll have sudo downloaded and installed and waiting for us. We won't have to wait until we get over to the sudo file, which is like the last step before we can in, uh, give Dennis user rights, the new user, uh, your user uh, privileges. So, pack strap. We're back. We've got a man page with a text info. We know we got network manager, network manager applet. We got base devel, so we'll be sure to get our uh, sudo command. Okay, so I think it's ready. So, we're going to hit enter. And I'm going to scroll down a little bit. You'll see the next step after we've done those. By the way, it also says that, you know, after we uh, chirrute into our new system, then we can install any other packages that we think we may need or want. So just because we didn't include them in Packstrap does not mean we can't get them and, and won't get them, depending on your needs. So, okay, well, I'm going to pause the video. You can see this is going to be a 1.8. 97 gigabyte download. So I'll pause the video here and I'll be back when it's complete. Okay, it's just about finished. It has finished downloading and now it's, it's already installed them and now it's doing all the things it does after the installation to create us a working file system. The next step in the wiki when this does get through is to configure the system. And we're going to configure the system using GenFS tab. And we're going to use this U here to define our drives as UUID or use a L for labels, respectively. Okay, so that's finished. I'm going to control L to clear the screen, but before I do, at the very bottom, it tells you that it installed that stuff that we asked for, and it's installed. So, Control-L. All right, so that I don't forget to do it, I'm going to say System, CTL, System Control, Enable, Network, Manager, and it's a capital N and a capital M. Hit Enter. 
fail to enable unit, unit network manager service does not exist. And I know we, oh, I know why, because I haven't cerooted yet. Okay. So let's go back and gen FS tab. Sorry about getting ahead of myself. Uh, if you wanted to see what the labels do and what they are here, here, gen, uh, gen FS tab space dash H gets you the definition there. Gen FS tab space dash capital U from MNT. We're going to pop it over and erase anything in this directory. ETC FS tab. Looks right. Hit enter. We're going to check that. By cat. MNT Etsy FS tab. There they are. And we got three drives, a root, a home, and a swap. So I'm going to control L to clear the screen. And let's see what the next step is. The next step is to arch to root. Dash change root over to what we've mounted. So we're fixing that. So far we've just been on the ISO, uh, whether it was on a USB or a CD or in my case, the ISO itself, we've been working off of that. Now that we've run Packstrap, it's taken all of those programs and put them on over to our actual hard drive. Now we're fixing to arch Charoot over to that hard drive. We do that by arch dash C-H-R-O-T space slash mount. Hit enter. Okay, so we've changed in our where we're at. Now, let me try that again. System CTL. I got to spell it right first. System CTL enable capital N W O R K capital M A N A G E R and bingo, there it is. So now uh, Network Manager has been enabled, so I won't have to worry about, can I get online? Okay, so the next thing it says to set our time zone, and we do that by going L N space dash S F slash user, U-S-R slash share slash zone info slash and if I hit enter right now, you would see, let's do it. Well, it didn't do it. You're supposed to be able to. I have to cut that part out. <laughs> it sure didn't work. I thought it would bring up the uh, time zones of state countries. All right, so in my case, anyway, I know it's America, Chicago, Etsy. Local time. All one word. Now that's done. Now we got to set our hardware clock. So H W C L O C K base dash dash this T O H C. All right. So before I go any further, if you'll read about that command, it says this command assumes assumes. Don't you just gotta love that word? assumes the hardware clock is set to UTC. All right, so how do we just make sure we're just going to go space dash dash UTC. Now we don't have to say, well, it assumes it, it's done. Hit enter. All right, so the hardware clock is set. Now localization. So first thing we got to do is edit our locale.gen. So we go nano. Etsy, locale, period, G-E-N, hit enter, and you're going to find your English, I mean, find your uh, language. In my case, I'm looking for English U.S., I just passed it. Okay, so English U.S., I'm going to arrow over once, backspace to get the hash mark out of there, uncomment it, and I'm also going to do the same to the U.S. ISO. Now, nano, control O, enter to write it out, control exit, X to get out of there, control L cleans the screen. 
next command is locale dash gen and that gives the computer a chance to set our locale now the next thing is to edit our locale.comp file and we do that by going nano etsy locale dot c o n f hit enter and in here we're gonna the same thing you just uncommented you're gonna repeat that here l a n g all caps equals lowercase e n underscore u s dot capital u t f dash eight sure that's spelled right i'm gonna hit in, uh, control o to write it out enter to confirm control exit to leave nano control l to clear the screen okay now we've edited our locale at this point if you had to set up your keyboard in the beginning right now you need to redo it so it will becomes persistent each time you load your machine and you do that by nano in this file right here and adding your key map same one you used in the beginning so network configuration now we need a host name and we do that by going nano etsy host name all one word we're going to hit enter it goes to open file in this case i'm going to say capital a r c h and call it arch control o to write it out enter to Say yep, control X, X gets us out of there, control L cleans the screen. Alright, so now we gotta edit our hosts plural file. I'm gonna do that by going nano Etsy slash host. Now right out of the wiki here we're gonna say one two seven dot zero dot zero dot one tab over and say local host all one word. Hit enter, colon, colon, one, tab, tab, local host, again, all one word, enter, and we'll go one, two, seven, dot, zero, dot, one, dot, one, tab over, and our host name, capital A, R, C, H, period, one word, local domain, L, O, C, A, L, D, O, M, A, I, N, tab over, and re type your host name. Be sure that's all spelled correct. You got the right digits in the right spots. Hit Control O to write out. Enter to confirm. Control X to get out of there. Control L to clean your screen. Okay, so what's next? Our init RAM file system. Creating a new init RAM file system is usually not required because make init CPIO was run on installation of the kernel package with packstrap well there's another one of those ambiguous words kind of like assume is usually <laughs> yeah, that, so because of that word usually i'm gonna run this command right here m k n i e t c p i o space dash capital p okay so it's creating a new init ram file system file next in our wiki when this gets through is to set our password okay so i'm going to control l to clear the screen and say p a s s w d and hit enter and think of a good complicated long unbreakable but nearly unforgettable password and that's been updated okay now we got to get a bootloader so we click on that it'll open this link which will be bootloader firmware types in bootloader go down to there scroll down to below it and we're going to install grub let me expand this so you can see more of it okay so i'm going to select grub and you see grub works in all of these systems right here 
all the way across the board. I don't have to worry about if it's butter FS or whatever. It's going to recognize it. So we're going to click on Grub, and it says, takes us to this page. Well, somewhere at the beginning, it should say installation right there. All right, so get my screen back. Go back to installation. Right here, 1.3. And to install Grub, we need to run uh, Pac-Man space dash capital S and write Grub. So let's do that. Pac-Man dash capital S G R U B. Enter. Say yes. The Y is bigger than the N, so the default is the Y. Okay. I'm going to clear the screen. Control L. Next thing is say grub dash install. And we're going to give it a target of equals i386-pc and we're going to install it on our device sda no numbers just your letter of your drive uh, it looks spelled correct okay now while that's installing scroll down to arts wiki go back what's the next step for a legacy bios is to generate the grub cfg file and it gives us the command right here use the grub make the big tool to generate boot grub grub cfg so this will be our next command what we're looking for over here though is for completion of this install and no errors reported Okay, installation finished, no error reported. Next command. Grub make config. G R U B dash M K config and output it to boot grub slash grub dot CFG. Check my command. Looks right. Hit enter. Okay, that's done. At this point, our base install is complete. What I'm going to do, instead of actually restarting, I'll shut down, and when I do shut down, I'm going to remove my the ISO file, and you, you shut down, you'll remove your USB or your CD if you're still using one of those. So, I'm going to hit shut down now. I'll be right back. Oh, oh, I got to exit Sharuk. So, I got to exit first. And then I got to U mount. Space dash capital R M N T. I forgot that. That was very important. All right. Now, I'm going to shut down now and remove the. And remove the ISO. And you remove your disk. Or flash drive. I'll be right back. Okay, so I've removed the ISO from the base here. Let's hit start. Now we're not going to get the option, but we do have Grub. I'm going to say we don't, we're not going to have the option to boot into Arch Linux or boot existing OS. If we did, we would have chose existing OS because now we've got an existing OS okay that brings us back to our prompt so I have no option at this point but to sign in as root so I type in root then I give it my long complicated password and we're in the root so now what's next well we gotta have users so we went down and we clicked on uh, 
we went down and clicked on general recommendations scrub I can get rid of that general recommendations and it brings us here we're in users and groups okay so I want to be part of the users group because right now all we have is a root account and so when you click on right here let me close this out so you'll believe you know, this will be proof I'm going to open that up in a new window instead of bringing me out at the top of the page where the contents are it brings you out right here where you, the user add command is and so that's what we're going to do right now get back to it there we go maybe yep okay so user add that's our our prompt our command user add we're going to give it a dash m space dash capital g right here it said that m gave us a home capital g adds us to groups and so the next step here is to put additional groups well where do you get those groups okay so i'm going to go back up to the top of this page look right here where it says users groups click on them and it brings me to user groups of course you can scroll down if you want to and there's some on here we're going to use like adm no space but a comma we're going to skip ftp and http because those are set up to contact with servers and i'm not doing that at my house so games would be next in that list log rf kill so i can control my wi-fi Spell that right, yep. Okay, RF kill, sis. All right, let's scroll down the page some more. Wheel, ooh, that's a really important one. We want to be a member of the wheel group, so wheel, comma. Okay, below that you see system groups. Here's some more groups. Okay, so some of these we don't really need, but we do need access to our printer. So LP will give us that. Scroll down some more, see if there's anything else. Could actually add yourself to the root group right here. But I don't think that's wise. We're going to keep going. And this is pre-system D groups. So before Arch was system D, this is the groups that they had. Audio, comma, disk, comma, Floppy, <laughs> comma, input, and who knows, we may eventually use a KBM based virtualization machine. Scroll up where I can see some more there, optical, scanner, comma, storage. comma video comma oh i see another list of groups it says unused groups the following groups are currently not used for any purpose however i see them the network power and users i see that in every video arch install uh, in their vi in their uh, groups so why not i'm going to include them network in case I need to give somebody permission to access my network manager, power. I guess that's so you can tell somebody they can or cannot turn your machine off. The last one we're going to get there is users. Okay, we got to go back up to the command that we started off the following to start with. Okay, so after we've added our additional groups, the next thing is a space dash s, then our login shell, which is bin bash, and then our new username. In case I'm going to use my name, Dennis. We'll hit enter. If any of that spelt wrong, it'll tell me. Must have been right to verify that I'm in those groups. I'm going to say groups and type in my username. And there I am, listed as groups. Now, Dennis needs a password. So, P-A-S-S-W-D space Dennis. 
Hit enter. Give me a password. Password. Repeat it. Okay, so now Dennis has got, he's a member of the groups, and he's got a password. But Dennis has no pseudo privileges. So pseudo Pac-Man, let's see, let me exit first and sign in as Dennis. Exit. I'm going to sign in as Dennis and give him my password. Okay, Dennis is there. But let's watch this, sudo pacman-syu to update, asking me for a password, and guess what, Dennis is not in the sudoers file. So, we go back over to users, and we're looking for elevated privileges, user groups, permissions and ownerships. Right here, privilege uh, elevation, pseudo, we click on that, but it brings us to here. So how do we give ourselves pseudo privileges? Well, according to this, we need to use by pseudo to edit it, edit our pseudo file, because it, it actually goes over the temporary file, make sure it's correct, and then copies it over to the a real uh, pseudo file sudoers file so according to that we need to run this command capital e d i t o r equals nano space five sudo hit enter oh permission denied because i have no no permissions so let me exit out of dennis or off of Dennis's account, sign back in with root, give them my long and complicated password. Now let me see if I can, no, it won't let me up arrow the same command. Okay, capital E-D-I-T-O-R equals nano by sudo. Hit enter. Okay, so as root, I had permission to come into here, but Dennis is needing that same. So, as an example in the Arts Wiki, go over here. First one down, they say underneath the root privileges, you add your username. So that would be Dennis, space, capital A L L, equals parentheses, at capital A L L, in parentheses, space, Capital A L L, enter. Okay, so Dennis now is member of the root group. We're gonna uncomment the wheel group so he can do that. And we're gonna say you don't have to use a password just because he's doing a command in the terminal. So Control O writes that out. Enter to say yep. Control X gets us out of there. Control L cleans the screen. So now, let's see if Dennis, let's see, exit, we're going to exit the root, sign back in as Dennis, give it my password, now we're going to say sudo pacman dash capital S Y Y U, look at there, and it's running. So our base install is actually complete. But there are some packages you're going to need, depending on what your needs are, depends on what those packages are. Some of the stuff that they've taken out that you'll need to add back in, possibly some of the audio, uh, video codecs, really depends. We'll install those before we install a desktop, though. And as far as this video goes, in the Arch Wiki, we are complete. We have a root who has his own password. We have a user who's part of the sudo group so that he can issue those commands. That's it. Our base install is complete. So I'm going to shut down now.
and enjoy. I'll be back with uh, how to do a XFCE desktop, a Mate desktop, and a KDE Plasma desktop. Enjoy.